Hello everyone, it's Detrina from the Alluring Bee Boutique and welcome back to my design channel. Today I'm going to be um, starting to work on a little series of spirals. It's actually for a post I'm working on over on my blog, uh, the, A Jeweler's Life on the AlluringBeeBoutique.com. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do um, some short little videos on how to make three different types of spirals. So here in front of me are some examples of spirals, different different forms of spirals. These are just a regular a flat spiral uh, with an open hole in the center. I've got a couple examples of that laying here. Here's one that I've formed into this little link. It's kind of cute. Um, you can make head pins out of them or whatever you want to do with them. Um, this is an example of an open spiral. As you can see here, it's called an open spiral because it's very open. Each each round of the spiral does not touch the previous round. This one is an open center. This one is an open spiral. And then um, this is also a spiral. This is a cone spiral. And I'll show you guys how to do that in a video soon. Um, one I don't have an example of laying here is called a closed spiral. And I'm going to show you guys how to do that today. But what it means is that the very center, instead of having this small hole in the center, it's going to it's going to be almost closed up. The wire is going to come back around and touch on itself, and that's uh, what gives it the closed look. You can alter the uh, appearance of the center hole any way that you want. You can close it up, or you can make it even as big as you'd like. It just depends on where you start your spiral on your round nose pliers as to how big that the hole in the center Will actually come out and then this is a coil but in essence it is also a spiral but it's just made in a 3d form and you make this around a mandrel of some sort so let's take a look at what tools we're going to need today and what materials and we'll go ahead and get started on um, our basic spirals you're gonna need a ruler you're going to need some flush cutters you need some round nose pliers. Um, if you have some nylon gel pliers for straightening wire, those come in really handy for these projects. We're also going to need some flat nose pliers. And if you'll notice here that I have blue uh, painter's tape taped over the ends of my flat nose pliers. And this is to help me keep from marring up my finish on these coated artistic wires. And you can also get a pair of chain nose pliers out if you have those. Now, the wire I'm using is all 20 gauge dead soft artistic wire. I've just got a couple of different colors laying here. So what I've done is I've went ahead on these four. I cut myself uh, four pieces of approximately four inches long. I flush cut each all the ends. And then I took a file... Or you can also use an emery board, but you take a file and you want to file your ends until they're completely flat on the top. And they don't have any barbs or sharp edges poking up. Like that. So I'm going to cut one more wire and I'm going to show you guys how I go about it. So here's just a little spool of some antique bronze wire. I'm just pinching it in my fingers and kind of straightening it up with my fingers just so that I can measure and cut it. Um... Before I always put my wire away, I always cut a flush end. So I know already I have a flush end on this wire. But if you don't, you would take the flush side of your cutters, which is the back side, where it's nice and flat. You put that towards the end of the work that you're keeping. So I'm going to be keeping this piece of wire. So I would just cut that little tip off right here inside that little gutter. Drop it down. Then I'm going to lay my wire down on my ruler, and I'm going to come down approximately four inches. And because I'm just practicing and um, doing a tutorial, I don't have to be perfect. But what I want to do when I come to cut the wire off, I want to put the back side of my flush cutters towards this piece of wire, because this is the wire I'm going to be working with. So I'll go ahead and cut that. And then before I put my wire away, I flip my cutters back over, and I put a flush cut end on my spool of wire. That way my spool is ready for me next time I want to use it. Now I have my piece of wire cut. Um, 
with this artistic wire the dead soft it's pretty easy to get a flush end you can use a little cheapo emery board like this you can use a jewelry file you can use a needle file you can even use sandpaper and what you want to do is just file until that end is nice and flat and doesn't have any barbs sticking up like that and do that on both ends and I'll save you a little time later once I have my wire cut I just take a quick moment to use my nylon dry pliers and smoothly and easily pull along the wire like this to straighten it I don't want to pull too hard I don't want to really I don't not trying to harden this wire too much because I want it a little bit soft for make it a lot easier to make my spirals so go ahead and cut yourself uh, six pieces of 20 gauge artistic wire and um, go ahead and flush cut your ends and file them nice and smooth into a flush end and then meet me back and we'll get started so I'm going to start with these um, two little silver pieces of wire. I'm going to just show you how to do. First, I'm going to show you how to do the closed hold center spiral. And then I'm going to show you how to do one that has an opening in the center. And these are just your basic flat primary spirals. So the first thing we have to do is we have to form a small tiny loop on the end of the wire. So I'm going to get my round nose pliers. And remember, we're going to do a closed one this time. So what we're going to do is we are going to grab so that we don't feel any wire poking up over the tips of these pliers. So if you rub your finger across, you should not feel the wire. But you need to make sure that the wire is in the jaw of the pliers like this. So this is what you're going for right here. Next, we're going to start rolling the wire over to form a circle so I've just rolled this way just like that so that here's what I have right now and I've got this little hook created right here and I might have went just a little bit too far so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring it out just a little bit because now I just want to have this little hook right there on my wire then I'm going to take this off you know I grab these little pliers right here and I'm going to push this wire up towards the top like this if you can see how I'm grabbing that and I'm going to push it I'm not going to mash it flat I'm going to push it upwards just like this till that's what I have I took my pliers in this direction like that and that's probably as closed as I can get it I don't think I can get it much more close, but for a closed center, that's pretty good. Now, for the first time that I'm going to make start turning this into a spiral, I'm going to switch over to these pliers because the tape's a little bit funky there on the end. I am going to grab this loop right on the very tip of the loop right here, at the tip of my pliers also. And I'm going to hold on to that, and I'm going to try to push this wire till it starts spiraling around my little circle that I made there and I want to get it as close as I can to that if I need to I could take my pliers out and squeeze it just really really gently until I get to make sure that it stays up against that first circle that we made so we want to push our wire over really gently this is a nice soft wire so it's actually working out really good I'm going to keep coming around a little at a time. I'm going to loosen my pliers and shift my little circle and push my wire forward. I'm going to loosen these pliers, move my circle ever just a few millimeters at a time, and then I'm going to push my wire. And what we're doing is we're pushing this wire up against the circle so that we have a nice, pretty little spiral forming. And you can continue working in this manner just... A little at a time a few millimeters at a time and you want to make sure that you're getting your wire all the way over till it's touching the wire that's on underneath your pliers there just like this and 
and then you can just keep working. And if you feel like, you know, that you're scratching your artistic wire, that is why I put the painter's tape on this pair. As your, as your spiral gets bigger, you can move this down to the center of your pliers, the nose of your pliers, and just work in little tiny small increments, just like that. The trick to this coming out nice is to take your time and work in those really small, delicate increments. Um, I can't stress that enough. If you try to do it too fast or bring your wire too too far, you're going to run into trouble. So you can see how I have this nice little close spiral for me. So I'm just going to keep working a little at a time. I'm going to go back to these pliers because my tape just got a little funky over there, but... I'm just going to keep gently working a little at a time. And it is a little painstaking and tedious, but in the long run, it's worth it if you want a really pretty little spiral. So as you're working, you want to make sure that you're maintaining the integrity of the spiral being flat. So what you're looking for is... When you turn this perpendicular, you don't have any wire poking out to the left or to the right on either side of your spiral. And that's another reason to keep working gently and making sure that you get the wire all the way up against the circle that's forming there in the center of your pliers. And you just keep going and going. And there you have a beautiful little closed center spiral. Or as close as you're going to get it using these uh, using these methods. So I've just carried on and just kept slowly going and slowly going, and not making too big of moves with my um with my wire at one time. Just a couple of millimeters at a time. The more you do this the better you will get at it and the faster it will become. Um, one thing I do want to say is that when you are making spirals, it is a lot easier to work with dead soft wire. So that is one thing that you will want to keep in mind. If you like some artistic wires, like the German wire is half hardened wire and it has quite a bit of spring to it, but that's what I made these with. And so it's a lot harder to work with. I just said, made a few samples yesterday. These are all made with the um, German uh, German um, half-hard wire, and it's a little bit more difficult to work with. Now, for something like these open spirals, it does help a little bit to have that little bit of hardness, but it's also a lot harder to correct any mistakes as you work along. So anyhow, that is how you do a closed center spiral. So let's go ahead and put this one down, and we will take a look at how to do one with the open hole in the center. So now we're going to make an open center spiral. Our coils are still going to be tight together up against our center, our, set, our first initial loop that we make. But the center is going to have a much bigger hole in it, such as this one here. So in order to do that, we're just going to get our round nose pliers. And all we're going to do is we're going to move our wire back a little bit. So um, just a little quick tip. If you have needle nose pliers, or excuse me, uh, round nose pliers, and you're going to be making a lot of components, and you want them to be as close to, uh, you know, the same as you can get them, you need to mark your pliers. So, like, if I want to make this spiral with the center hole, um, you know, with the diameter here, I will put my wire right there on my red mark, and then for my next component, I need to put my wire in the exact same place when I start. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and then I'm just going to roll. I'm going to go ahead and start rolling my loop. And I'm going to bring it all the way around, such as this, and then I'm going to let go. So that this is what I have. Now, there are a lot of different methods out here for trying to get this loop to be more round. Somebody said you can take your um, crimping pliers, like you used to close crimp tubes, and you can use those to push that more into a circle shape. So there is what I'm going to go with. I just used that front end of my, the front gap on my crimpers here, and I push that. You want to push that end so that it's moving in a circle. 
So you see how this is going around? Normally when you make a loop, it tries to come straight across right here on your wire. But now it looks pretty round, so we've got a good start. And then, once you have that done, the process is basically the exact same as it was for the um, close center. We're going to grab right onto our little circle with the tip of these pliers. And I'm going to start pushing this wire very gently, a couple of millimeters at a time, and just start rolling it around to, and pushing that wire all the way up against my initial circle. In that first, you know, the first little um, section that you do is always going to take the longest and seem like it's never going to work. And keep on doing that making sure to get my wire all the way up against that initial circle like that it's a little hard to see and then I'm going to you know just keep shifting my center ever so slightly and pushing my wire a few millimeters at a time and then once you have the first little bit done you can switch over to, you know, these ones that have the tape on them, or you can just continue on. If you're using sterling silver or gold-filled wire or copper wire, you don't have to worry about scratching that little coating that's on these artistic wires. But when you're working with artistic wire, it can become uh, quite ugly looking with a bunch of tool marks on the wire. So we're just going to keep rolling along, just like we did on the other one. Nice and slow, steady movements, a few millimeters at a time, making sure to keep our wire touching the, the previous round, all the way around. One thing you want to do is resist the urge to turn your pliers and your wire hand at the same time. Um, that is um, a fatal flaw. It does not work as well as this method. You will get gaps. You will have U-shaped looking um, turns. The, try to just resist that urge and constantly just use your thumb to move the open end of your wire a little at a time. It seems time consuming and it is a little time consuming, but the finished product is always going to look a lot better if you can resist that urge. Yeah, we're just going to keep rolling along here. You can check your work occasionally, turn it perpendicular, make sure that everything's nice and flat. Nothing's poking out or looking really strange. And then just keep working a little bit more until you get as much of a spiral as you'd like. Just like that. And there's the difference between the closed center and the open center spiral. If you would like to use these for an eye, you know, like a head pin or an eye pin, or even as a charm or anything like that, you're going to have to figure out some way of getting this uh, last bit of wire to go perpendicular, uh, especially if you're going to, unless you want the offset look. In this instance, if you were to drop a bead down, it's going to look a little bit weird. So let me show you. So I just got a couple of little beads here out of my little stop bead baggie, and let's take a look. So if I drop this down and leave it just the way it is, a bicone, it doesn't actually look that bad because the narrower uh, end of the bicone kind of slides right down in there. Round beads and other shaped beads are not going to do as well because you're going to see right here that it's going to flip and flop all the way around. It doesn't fit into that gap. So if we want to straighten this up, we can just grab our little chain nose pliers. We can bring them in right there. And we can just bend our wire up like so. It went a little too far, but anyhow, you can adjust that like so. And now you have this cute little pin, head pin, that will accommodate a bead like this without any problems and then you would literally do the same exact thing on this one you would just bring in your pliers and bend your wire up like that and there you have these cute little 
Uh, you can make a little simple loop way down here, make charms out of them. You can make, uh, you can make links out of them. You can do all kinds of stuff with them. They're, it's a pretty neat little concept. All right, so those are um, the ones I wanted to show you today, which are the closed center and the open center spiral. Very easy to do. No, it just takes practice. I would encourage you not to get discouraged. Um, I was sitting here. I haven't made any for a long time. And so I was sitting here yesterday, and I come out with something like this, which really is not that bad looking. But you can see that it has kind of an oval shape instead of a circle. But even that, within its own set sense, is a pretty element. All right, so that's it for now. When I come back next time, I'm going to show you guys how to do these open swirls. And we'll talk about how you can go about getting them doing two relatively the same so that you have a nice matching set.